Hey, we're back here at Davis Media Access for another episode of In the Studio. I'm Autumn Labbe Renault. I'm your host today for this episode. We're talking about some exciting and possibly life-changing services coming to Davis for folks who need to access them. My guests today are Yolo County Supervisor Don Saylor, uh, who covers the second district, and Nolan Sullivan, who is the Service Center's Branch Director for the Yolo County Health and Human Services Agency, and welcome to you both. Thank you. Thank you. So we're here today because I, I'm, I'm on your email list, Don, and a couple months ago you sent out uh, uh, some exciting news that people are going to be able, able to access um, various county health and human services here in Davis, and that hasn't happened before. So let's start there. How did this come about? Well, Autumn, I think you're aware we have a building at 600 A Street. Yeah. That's right between the Senior Center and Davis City Hall. Right. That's a county building. Now, this building was constructed 40 years ago as a courthouse. Uh, of overflow court space was, was what it was needed. Right. Over time, it's housed a number of different functions, including the City of Davis print shop and a computer child lab. care program, computer yeah, lab, all kinds training of room. Mm -hmm. And it's housed the, the two county supervisors who live in Davis. Well, we, for years I've been working to try to have that be more robust as a service center for health and human services. 215,000 people in Yolo County, about 68,000 of them live within the city limits of Davis. Right. So if, if one of the people in our community, in the Davis community, needs to access county services for CalWORKs or the the uh, food, food nutrition support program called CalFresh mm -hmm. or Medi-Cal, or mental health services, they were having to travel to either West Sacramento or Woodland all this time. Right. So the, something kind of came about, this whole combination of events. A couple of years ago, we were able to, to uh, relocate the child care center, uh, the child care uh, payment activities that were happening in the building. Right. The city space consolidation freed up a good share of the building at 600 A Street. And we were, we were working to establish a teen transition age youth program, a drop-in center for mental health consumers who are adolescents at the, at the building. And as we started working on this, okay. we realized we had some mental health services funds that needed to be spent this year. And we had access to a fund called the Intergovernmental Transfer Fund, which is essentially a reimbursement based on uh, subsidies for medical care for low-income people. Right. We get money back at the after we've spent it a little bit of it back. So, and then with some county general fund, we pieced together and we're remodeling that building at 600A so that we can have a service center. Now, this is much like one we did in winters mm -hmm. of about mm -hmm. a year and a half, two years ago. Now, the people in Davis, starting in July, will be able to come to 600A Street and, and be able to fill out applications for eligibility for Medi Cal, Foods and CalFresh, the SNAP program, talk to people about employment services. The, the array of activity that they used to have to go to right. Woodland for. And so I'm, I'm really excited about this additional service. And from my personal experience, it's not just Woodland. It's way out in Woodland. It's way out on Cottonwood. <laughs> right. uh, when I was caretaking my mother and I had to deal with uh, in-home health services and Medi-Cal application and all that, I had to go to Woodland. And I found right. myself wondering at the time, couldn't this be done in, in Davis? So thank you to the supervisors for pulling all those threads together and, yeah. and helping make that happen. Well, and it turns out there are 10,000 people in mm -hmm. Davis who would access the service right. that we know about and probably even more if they had easier access. Right, because transportation is a barrier, time right. off from work, right. time off from caregiving, and all of that. Absolutely. So, Nolan, uh, Don's email outlined all kinds of services right. that are going to be provided right. there, and I'm hoping you can kind of you know fill in some of yeah, those. Yeah, we're really excited. It's going to be basically the same services we offer in Woodland or we offer in West Sacramento or to some extent in Winters, but it's going to be here in Davis. So it'll be just right, you know, right up the road. Um, basically, we will do full-scale Medi-Cal, CalFresh, and CalWorks applications. So folks can come in and apply for any of those programs. So for those of you that don't know, Medi-Cal is low-income health insurance or health insurance for folks that are disabled. Um, CalFresh is, is the same thing as food stamps, and that's low-income food assistance for folks, which is a, a vitally needed program in the county, and we're, we're growing kind of off the charts. And then CalWorks is what's called a cash assistance for needy families. And so mm -hmm. that gives them cash assistance, gives them some food supports, and health insurance, um, all with the assistance of employment or self-sufficiency kind of as the end goal there. So we'll be able to support those uh, three primary programs, which are Yolo County's biggest programs, 
And then we're going to have a whole gamut of mental health and women and infant children's services as well. So we're building what we call a wellness center, which is a drop-in day center mm -hmm. for adults with developmental disabilities to receive therapy or kind of just uh, work with their peers or kind of do a peer counselor support. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have the same mental health clinic we've had for the last couple months to years, um, kind of operating the same services there, but we're expanding those to the Tay population like Don talked about, right. which we're really excited about for Davis. Um, and then we'll continue our WIC services too. So WIC is Women, Infant, and Children. So we love our acronyms in government. Um, <laughs> and so that service assists uh, either pregnant moms or, or new moms get uh, supports in terms of breastfeeding or formula or food supports. So um, kind of like you said, we send people down the road to go to Woodland or to, to West Sac and mm -hmm. folks will be able to access these services in their own backyard. Um, the other thing that a lot of folks don't know is once you get on these services, typically there's like a one year recertification period. So. Mm -hmm. Not only do we make you come down and apply the first time, you have to come back every year to recertify. So hopefully this will save uh, many miles on Davis residents, um, you know, cars in, or in getting to Woodland or bus trips or whatever, and we'll have it like Dawn said at 600 yeah. a day. And I'm here to tell you, I like to think I'm pretty savvy. That Medi-Cal application oh. was daunting. It's tough. And, and I really <laughs> needed the help of a caseworker to kind of help me right. work through it. So right. I was very grateful for that. So 10,000 people in, in Davis, roughly, who can access these services. How do people find out about these services and how are they maybe referred to your department? You know, that's a great question. I, I think it, it, it's kind of accidental right now, honestly, at this point. Um, one of the projects that Don has kind of started over the last two years, though, is there's a huge student hunger epidemic across the, the, across the whole state and the country, um, but UC Davis in particular. So we looked kind of a while back at CalFresh numbers across the entire county, and mm -hmm. UC Davis, based on census data, has some of the lowest participation rates in CalFresh in the entire county. The county is actually one of the lower counties in general, too, so we're trying to get those numbers up. So we've been actively recruiting students at UC Davis to try and get them onto Cal Fresh and working with the Interfaith Rotating Shelter and kind mm -hmm. of trying to get folks to use these benefits. We've got a great partnership with the Food Bank. Um, so we really try to get the word out anywhere and everywhere we can. Um, we're accessing social media now and kind of we have an online presence. Um, but it's kind of one of those things where you don't really know until you need it. Um, I would say with the medical insurance or, or Medi-Cal, typically what happens is providers refer to us to folks to us. So you're, you're either in the emergency room or it's a nursing home, and they assist with the application process there. Yeah. Um, and then CalWorks, you know, again, that's kind of a hidden gem as well for a lot of our low-income families. And that's the one I'm probably most excited to bring to Davis because we don't have that resource here for needy families. But we have the ability to provide housing, to provide food, to provide shelter, to really help these families in need kind of get back on their feet. And they're hard to find, especially here in Davis. Yeah. So I'd add just a couple things. There's mm -hmm. the, the website for Yolo County, yolocounty.org. Right. You, a person could drill down to Health and Human Services and mm -hmm. find a lot of the information about contacts. If anybody has a question, uh, and they, they, they can email my office as well, and that's uh, donsailor at yolocounty.org, okay. or look us up on donsailor.org, and we'll help you find help you navigate yep. where you want, where you, where you need to need to go. Uh, there's a there's there's an array of activities that uh, that the county is engaged in, and one of the things that I'm kind of interested in as we move forward, we have a we have a homeless response coordinator. So mm -hmm. if somebody sees somebody, if, if, a, if a resident sees a, a homeless person who they think needs some help, right. they can contact us and some of Nolan's colleagues do, do appear as their social workers who come in and, and talk with the folks and see if we can find them. Yeah. So uh, there's a little bit of help. intake that happens, kind of assessment. Yes. Mm -hmm. And especially if it's a family, we have a, uh, we have a, a grant stream that allows us to put folks in emergency housing uh, for homeless families, so if you see somebody who needs some some support and it's a whole family, or a parent, one parent with some children, then we can help them in a, in a in a better way. So once we have this presence in the at 600 A Street, I think we're going to be able to link and connect much more effectively with the network of nonprofit providers already in Davis. Mm -hmm. And one last one last point for now is that um, in addition to the service center. The offices for Yolo County Supervisor Jim Provenza, mm -hmm. representing District 4, myself representing District 2, will still be in the building, and Assemblymember Aguiar Curry's office for the district is also in this building. So it'll be a place where people can come to ask for help in solving any number of problems. Right, and you folks have the best staffs around. Your staffs are always I so agree. responsive, so hats off to them Thanks. as well. Worked with many of them over the years. Yeah. Um, and CalFresh, you and I have been in there talking. You've been in here before. We've talked right. about food scarcity and what a problem it is. And 
people don't stop to think, you, you know, if you're in Davis and kind of inside the bubble, you don't sometimes stop to think that there are people here who are going hungry. And there are lots of people in Yellow County who are going hungry. So, so about one in four adults in California and then in Yellow County as well is food insecure. And for children, it's higher. It's close to one in right. to uh, well, it's the other way. It's one in five adults. One in five and one in four. One in yeah. four. Yeah. Yeah. Which children. is heartbreaking. Shocking. Yeah. yeah. And and oddly enough, and it it's defies our stereotypes. UC Davis students are one of the largest underserved populations in Yolo County for accessing uh, food support programs that they're eligible for. So what Nolan referred to is we now have. Yeah eligibility workers from the county embedded in student financial aid office and in the health center office. That's excellent. So and that the pantry, the food pantry. And the pantry. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and that's that's really, this this first uh, in September when school started back up this year, we had a real wave of, of students coming forward and that's, that's, that's new and it's right. really a lack of awareness. Your question about how do people find out about yeah. programs that they're that they're eligible for. That's an ongoing issue for us. Programs like this, thank right. you for doing this. Right. It allows us to get a word out. We create materials and websites and so yeah. forth, but it really depends on. Well, we'll continue to su support this conversation Absolutely. on an ongoing basis via social yeah. media and our, our channels and public service announcements and all of that. So yeah. happy to help with that. Before we run out of time, yeah. I want to hear a little bit more about the, the youth component um, that you mentioned earlier and the wellness center. So if you could kind of touch on right. those two a little right. bit. Right, I will. And I want to touch really quick on the employment center too, because I completely spaced on that. But um, <laughs> so basically, um, we have some pretty innovative new TAE programs. And so TAE is transition age youth. And so kind of depending on which program you're talking about, that's usually somewhere in the ballpark of 16 to 26. Um, and basically, we have some pretty amazing staff now that provide uh, amazing counseling services and group services to, to this population. And so we'll actually have a hub here in Davis that they can use and kind of operate out of the Wellness Center. And so the Wellness Center probably takes up maybe a third of the building. It's a pretty good size of the 600 A Street building. So it's just... It's going to have an inviting physical space where folks can go if they're having some trouble, if they need to see someone, if they need, you know, if parents need some support, if, you know, others need support or groups like NAMI or other groups want to meet after hours. It's just going to be that kind of central hub for those services. There's currently one in Woodland and there's currently one in West Sacramento and they're operating um, a couple days a week and they're fantastic. Does um, this include emancipated foster youth who are absolutely, aging out? Absolutely, and that's one of the bigger targets here in Davis. Yeah. We have quite a few emancipated foster youth and active foster youth kind of in that Tay bracket here in Davis. Okay. So we'll have a heavy focus for okay. supporting those groups. And employment center. Employment centers, that's one of the other important pieces of my work too. So we actually, it's gonna be a small employment center but it's gonna be mighty. Um, so <laughs> we are going to have uh, basically all of our employment centers in Yolo County. So we've got one in Woodland, we've got one in West Sac and one in Winters currently. Davis will have its own employment center with a designated employment specialist. We work with local employers to find the freshest job postings, to find the freshest recruitments, and really pair local job seekers to those jobs. And so what we'll be doing there is we'll have computers for doing resumes, for job search, for kind of upgrading skill sets. We'll have an employment specialist there to link folks to programs and revenues and different funding streams to help them upgrade or kind of get different jobs. And we'll also have some employer outreach where we're trying to work with employers in Davis to kind of fill their employer needs. So that's phenomenal. we want to be that one-stop yeah. shop for employers and for candidates looking for jobs. And whether or not you meet our program criteria, we have something for you. So we want to encourage anyone looking for employees or any employees looking for work to come into the center once we have it up and running. Um, it's going to be pretty fantastic. That's really good news because people often don't know where to start, right. how, to, how to get those, right. you know, access to those resources, how to get computer time, you know. So I think that's really phenomenal awesome. work. We are about out of time. I told you it would go quickly. I want to thank you both for coming in and chatting with us today. And as I said, we will continue helping you get the word out and, and trying to reach uh, the people you need to reach to come in and use these services. For now, we've been talking in the studio about uh, some upcoming health and human services uh, that will be available available in the newly remodeled county building at 600 A Street starting by July 2018. Mm -hmm. And um, lots of good news coming for Davis residents who need a little bit of help. Thanks for tuning in and be sure to check us online at dctv.davismedia.org for a full archive of our programs. Great. Thank you.